Do you see your shadows as just gray or brown? In this video, I'm going to show you how much color I see in the shadows and how you can see all that color as well. This is a quick loose sketch on non-sanded Kensan paper. They sell it in pads and if you take the piece of paper out of it and turn it over, that's a better side that doesn't have that mechanical pattern on it. But it still holds enough pigment. With soft charcoal I created some outlines for the shapes and now within those shapes I'm going to establish the larger areas of color and that is going to be some warmer browns, kind of rusty, warming up that area and also some cooler colors as well. Why? Because parts of the dune are more vertical and parts are more facing the sky more. So they are going to pick up some more cooler color from the sky. And the warmer areas, more vertical, they are getting a little bit of that reflected light or maybe a lot of that reflected light from the brightly sunlit areas, horizontal areas. So that's the idea and to make that color a little bit richer particularly darker colors so that the lighter background doesn't show through the darks making them kind of diluted that's why i would blend those first layers because they're very similar that's fine very similar in value and now it's the time to bring some lights in and i really like that moment when i have the lights highlights and the mid-tones and the darker colors in then the whole dune starts getting the shape at first it's just about picking up these lighter areas so the color i'm using pretty much the same all around but there will be some nuances as i refine the color later and let's show some of these lighter grasses at the top now the sky and with the sky actually when i have it in i will have this whole picture kind of in a very rough state but i can now start seeing the dune happening and now i will just start refining the colors and creating some textures and some details I also have a tutorial here on how to paint the dunes on sanded paper with wet underpainting technique and using isopropyl alcohol. So if you're interested, check it out. I will have a link in the description below. It's an interesting technique and it has its own advantages. So I really recommend you watch it if you haven't yet. And if you find this tutorial helpful, please give it a like and also consider subscribing to this channel because I will be bringing more tutorials like this and I do need to see that you want to watch them. Moving on with refining colors, added some more purple colors and they work really nice with the background color of the paper showing through a little bit. So it's not just blue or purple shadow but it's basically like a more of a reflection of the sky on a earthy color. And the sand of course is very light and it's very reflective. So there will be a lot of that kind of blue in the shadow, but it's not just that. And here also something that I think works quite well. It's this coral pink to warm up the areas where maybe there's more of that reflected light bouncing into. Then we have some darker colors to restore or to add and that's where there's a lot of that dry grass or maybe like the area is a little bit more recessed and in combination with those cooler darker colors and lighter browns, somewhat lighter browns, there's a nice temperature contrast happening there. I want to get those shadows first before I start adding the lighter colors. Even in the shadows are going to be some lighter colors in the grass, not as light as in the highlights, but first I need those shadows because if I start with the lighter colors and then start adding the darker colors, it will start looking like a cutout. It looks much more natural when I build up to the highlight gradually. And that doesn't mean that I have to start with a very, very dark color, but the darker color in the area I'm working in. And now I can use my brightest highlight color. 
They are on the dune that is really exposed to the sun. The sun is directly illuminating it. And I shouldn't cover up all that a little bit darker color that I had there before so that there's still some variation within it. Because once the color is the same everywhere, it starts looking monotonous and flat. And I don't want that to happen here. And I want to add some highlights maybe on the ridges of these mini ripples. That little highlight on the side of the dune, it should be a little bit more subtle. I made it too bright. So I probably will end up using the coral, that warm and coral color around it to make it a little bit more subtle. And now to the top of the dune. The edges, those darkest edges of the dune at the top, they can be interrupted by the grasses. They should be interrupted by the grasses because there's a lot of that happening there and that will kind of soften that dark edge and that's important so that things don't look outlined and now a little bit of this kind of pink cooler pink color blue pink and i think it works well for the shadow now that i have enough of the pigment here on paper it starts smoothing the pigment underneath every mark starts making the previous layers a little bit smoother it's okay if that's the effect i want but sometimes it's a sign to stop and look at this blue i love the effect and i think it's a really nice color here to indicate that this slanted surface as opposed to that straighter part at the top it's actually picking up some of that blue color from the sky because we have that beautiful blue in the sky which is reflecting into the land into the sand and the sand is very reflective so i want to add that and before i had purple but it was kind of grayish purple not purple as just very bright purple but definitely purplish color but now with this cooler blue there's a little bit more of a contrast here with the warmer more vertical parts and that cooler blue color and i think i do like this effect quite a bit and so what that it's not as bright in the picture who cares if it really creates the mood that i'm going after I think that's all that matters because anyone who wants the exact representation of the dune can just use a picture. So this is the painting or the drawing, it depends. Some people consider pastel a painting, some people would say it's a drawing. So it's up to you, you make up your mind on this on your own. For me it is a painting because it's the techniques are kind of similar and it ends up looking like a painting. People are asking me if it's an oil when they don't know what the medium is. So to me, that's a painting. And maybe I'm asking for trouble, but tell me in the comments, what do you think? Do you think the pastel work is a drawing or a painting? The argument is that for that to be considered a painting, the liquid medium has to be used, basically the paint. But the other side of the argument is that pastel is used in a painterly way. So I'm curious, what do you think about this? And this is the part that I really enjoy doing. And it can be like this beautiful calligraphy of marks. And this can be done maybe like with a hot pastel, but I love using this sharper edge of pastels like Terry Ludwig, those square ones. And just kind of touching sometimes that sharper part against the sanded paper particularly but it works even here but on the sanded paper you will get more of that effect but it can definitely create those thin lines and they are a little bit more organic looking than if I start drawing with that so I like that effect and why that purple at the edge of the grass well because the grass becomes really 
thin at the edges and it's kind of the color that's merging it into the blue. It creates a better transition into the sky. So this is the time to finalize any color that I still want to be tweaked to make any changes, warm it up or also create this fine thinner detail like here the grasses for example now I'm using that ochre color to create the grasses in the shadows and I have to make sure it's not that lighter yellow that I was using for the highlights because that would break the shadows and hot pastels are also nice for kind of feathering some of the areas into the background color that's working great for the grass particularly some of you mentioned in the comments to another video that it was great to have these color swatches the palette so i have it in this video as well and you can see it's rather limited it's not like i'm using the ton of colors but it's important that you have the variations between cooler and warmer colors and if you want to learn more about that about color i do have classes zoom classes and also self-study lessons you can check out my links in the description below for that if that was helpful if you enjoyed watching this tutorial please give it a like it helps me a lot to get this video shown to more people and also consider subscribing because i will be posting more tutorials like this and you don't want to miss them right and don't forget there's another video about painting the dunes just with a different technique about working on sanded paper so you can check it out next and also the link is going to be in the description below.